Have you seen the latest in gaming hardware news? Because it's pretty hilarious and a bit messy. So if you're like me, an i9 user, you might well have seen this error message out of video memory when trying to play certain games, causing crashes. And NVIDIA recently, a while ago, started blaming Intel for it, despite the fact that it was a video error message. And it turns out, after some investigation, that it's down to the i9-14900K and 13900K and variants thereof, at least... The CPU is causing some problems. Intel investigated the crashes, which were particular to Unreal games, and then various different motherboard manufacturers, including Asus and Gigabyte, started rolling out baseline profiles with default changes, which allowed you to dial back some of the settings in the BIOS pretty easily and help with stability. Intel then mandated that everybody had to do that by the 31st of May because obviously it doesn't want people having high-end CPUs that they can't use properly and games constantly crash. Now MSI recently unleashed a BIOS update which allows you to set Intel default settings and doing this basically gives you a pop-up which says select your cooler type as Intel default, and then it reduces the power limit settings right down. The impact of this is, as you'd expect, performance takes a hit. So versus the standard profile, you're getting a lower score in Cinebench, and potentially the CPU is not going to perform as well as it would. However, as you'll see, that does reduce the overall temperatures and combats thermal throttling, so stability should definitely be there with these sorts of baseline profiles. However, Intel's come out and said that several motherboard manufacturers are basically pushing out these profiles that are not in line with Intel's default settings, and Intel is not recommending that motherboard manufacturers use baseline power delivery settings on motherboards that are capable of higher values because you could be getting more out of your system. You don't necessarily need to throttle it right back like that. So it's kind of a knee-jerk reaction. Intel has its own recommended default settings, which is published, and you can see here. And that includes power delivery profiles for both the 13th gen and 14th gen i9 CPUs and the K and KF and KS variants as well with the different settings, because it shouldn't be the same for each of those different CPUs. So you can go into the BIOS and tweak those settings manually. And it's basically all about adjusting the power limit, the short duration power limit and the long duration power limit, along with some other settings in there. Because as default, it was going to like 4,096 watts, which was too high, and that was causing the instability. But with some tweaks and changes, you can drop that down to what Intel's actually recommending, which in turn is beneficial because it then improves performance and helps with stability. Now, it's still not as powerful and good performing as it would be with the basic default settings that you were using before, but it should be more stable in theory. And from what I've seen, it doesn't thermal throttle still. Still getting good scores in Cinebench and it should run smoother in games and shouldn't see as many crashes. Now I'm gonna investigate this across Zeus motherboards and Gigabyte in the near future as well. But I've done a video separately on this MSI setup, for example, and talked about all the specifics of that. And you can see the Cinebench score has only dropped a little bit compared to those default settings with MSI. Pretty crazy time to have an i9 at the moment. You've got a high-end CPU and probably a decent PC, and yet you're suffering with stability issues. I had no end of bother when I was running on a Zeus motherboard with this setup, and it was causing me all sorts of headaches with things crashing. I didn't realize at the time what it was actually down to. I thought there was a hardware issue. Turns out it's actually the BIOS. So if you're suffering with those problems, it may well be worth looking at the BIOS settings, getting the latest BIOS updates, and seeing if that helps improve stability. Come back for more, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.